<laughs> hey y'all, William did a Pungo Prairie. Well, <clears throat> I hope everybody had a, a very Merry Christmas or a Happy Hanukkah or uh, whatever you might be celebrating this time of year. Um, Tally Girl and I, <laughs> we had a big Christmas. Uh, we kind of did our Christmas Eve thing at my sister's house with my mom and the family with the uh, Christmas Eve Bolognese Italian feast we always have. And um, in Tally Girl, we've been trying to do some cleaning up around the Pungo Prairie Saloon here. And uh, to tell you the truth, I had to cut my mountain time back about a week and a half this year and come home early, pack up camp and come home early because I caught some kind of bronchial bug from, uh, I think, my cousin Brucey up there and uh, got feeling bad and coughing and congestion and tell you the truth that was a month ago and um, I'm still not completely over it you can probably hear a little raspiness going on in my voice but uh, we wanted to get back with y'all and connect again and uh, getting ready to go into a new year and we hope all y'all are safe and and uh, have a very happy new year uh, celebrate safely moderately if you know what i mean but um <clears throat> one thing uh that i really love is stained glass and uh the you know stained glass is expensive um the first piece i ever bought uh was just a little piece maybe about 12 inches tall by about 14 inches wide uh when i was on a hunting trip uh down near hondo Texas and back in those days uh, I was dating this young lady Christina and I took her along on the trip <laughs> and that was that was pretty interesting but um, Christina said I booked us a couple of nights at the Menger Hotel when we get done hunting um, I said Christina when we get done hunting I'm coming home she said, listen to me, this is my vacation too, and we're going to spend a couple days around San Antonio. Well, to tell you the truth, we had a, a big time. I mean, it was a lot of fun there. Uh, I'll tell you a real quick little short story about Christina. Uh, she's from Indianapolis, Indiana, and she came here. Uh, we had met through a client, a boat client of mine that was uh, best friends with her that were from Indianapolis. <laughs> And uh, uh, Christina was on this hunting trip. She had flown home for an early Christmas celebration with her family and met me at the airport in San Antonio. I flew from Norfolk. So we're in the, the blind, uh, the stand that first afternoon, and we're sitting there, and I hear a telephone ringing. Like, where is that phone? I mean, we're out in the middle of nowhere in South Texas and on this ranch and Christina reaches down in her purse she brought her purse along pulls out her phone and starts talking to whoever it was on the other end right at that moment a big bull elk had walked up and was rubbing on a tree out there in front of the blind and here's Christina yakety yakking with her friend and I'm like Christina hang up the damn phone you see that elk out there? I'm trying to get some video of it. <laughs> Christina, she kind of <clears throat> cowers down a little bit. She says, I got to go. Dixon's mad at me because there's an elk in here, and he wants to film it, and I'm talking on the phone. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, you should lay down certain rules, you know, ground rules, uh, especially for somebody who never been in a, a deer stand before. But that was, uh, that was Christina. Uh, <laughs> she didn't mean no harm by it. <clears throat> but let's get back to the days after the hunt that we spent at the Menger Hotel in Stained Glass. Um, I bought this piece in the gift shop there. Uh, like I said, just a little piece about maybe 14 inches wide and maybe a foot tall of a cowboy boot, some chili peppers, and a couple folded up in a triangle red bandanas. 
Now, not a whole lot of money because it was such a small piece. I bought it, and uh, right now I got it hanging uh, over the window or in the window that's over the headboard of the bed in the Pungo Prairie Saloon. And uh, later on, when I built a little house, uh, I got another piece uh, from Maida, uh, I think I'm saying that right, <clears throat> up in New York. And it's a loom. And I special framed in a window just the right size to where I could hang that loom uh, in a little house. But I've been saving up for quite a few years, I don't know, maybe three years, for this one piece that I had seen in the catalog when I had bought that loom. Um, and I really wasn't sure there was two pieces there. They're both at the same size. And uh, one was a bear uh, in a little marsh scene. And the other was a buck deer uh, that was uh, taking a sip of cool water in a little stream somewhere in the woods. Well, after several years of saving up, uh, I went online to check out the uh, that piece that I wanted, the deer, I think I was leaning more towards that, and lo and behold, it was on sale. Um, I think original price was somewhere around $900, and that's a lot of money for me to sp uh, spend and splurge on something. And I think it, they had it like 20% uh, off. And it's in this big old box right here. I'm gonna see if I can get it out. Okay. <laughs> had to cut the camera off for a minute. Wrestle with this thing. Oh, let's see what we got. <laughs> look at that, y'all. Is that pretty or what? Now, it's going to look a whole lot better uh, when it's backlit with the sunlight. Because I got just a place I'm going to hang it. I think hanging in this bathroom window here is going to be the perfect place for two reasons. First, it's going to really dress up this bathroom. And number two, <laughs> we are in the bathroom, you know. <laughs> that was not scripted. Um, this window to the bathroom goes out on the back porch of the Punga Prairie Saloon here. And this way, it's going to give a little bit more privacy uh, to whoever might be using this bathroom if somebody happens to be outside on the back porch. Now it came with these little brackets here and a little piece of chain for hanging it so you didn't have to run to the hardware store. Uh, it all came in the box with the stained glass panel. Let's try this right here at that little ring Let's see if I can feed that in there okay got that side all right I think it looks pretty good um, let me turn out some of these lights in here and see what we can uh, get a little better glow from it I may have to end up uh, ordering a different window I'm not real crazy about that shadow uh, from those mullions behind it but for right now I think it's gonna do just fine except I think it's missing something I think for as spectacular as that stained glass panel is with that deer in that brook it needs a better presentation it needs something to uh, to make it pop and I got just the idea Forty and a half on both sides. <laughs> Imagine that.
come out of this sweatshirt in here. That's a little better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see if I can remember which ones go where. <laughs> Should have numbered them. Didn't know he was going to be putting together a jigsaw puzzle. nail set dry that one down a little bit more actually this board's gonna cover it nicely look after all aren't we switch broke on this thing I don't know 15 20 years ago <laughs> one of them old electrolux vacuum cleaners I reckon I've had it for gosh well over 40 years I don't think it turned out half bad it might not be what you want in the bathroom of a penthouse suite in mid-Manhattan, but then again, if you was in the penthouse in mid-Manhattan, I don't think you have to worry about any peeping toms in the first place. <laughs> yeah, I just may need to swap that window out for a solid pane of glass. The outside window, get rid of that, that bar in the middle. Now let me tell you all a little something about the window that used to be here. Um, this was the original bathroom. Now, I enlarged it a little bit, uh, but the old window that was right here uh, is this window right here. And when I gutted the bathroom, uh, tore it all out, it was the ugliest thing you ever did see. It was all Pepto, Bismol pink, the ceiling, the tiles, uh, the, the floor tiles, the tub, it was all Pepto, Bismol pink. And it wasn't uh, the kind of color that I could envision living with for a bathroom the rest of my life, if you know what I mean. So um, anyway, the original window that was here, and I'll show you a view from the outside of the house uh, when I was gutting it, uh, ended up being thrown out and tossed on a scrap pile. And one day I was walking by that scrap pile and I saw those two wooden sashes. Uh, the upper and the lower from the double hung bathroom window laying there and I said you know I really ought to save at least something one little thing from this ugly old house uh, kind of uh, for a keepsake uh, in memoriam of the ugly little old house <laughs> so I took those two window sashes and set them aside and not sure what I was going to do with them because uh, originally right here this was a doorway that went into the second bedroom of this house and which I completely gutted and tore out and on the other side of this wall is my pantry in the kitchen so 
uh, when I got this uh, vision to have some stained glass, uh, you know, to go in the house, I had really thought that right here is where I would put it. Um, but it took, you know, like I said, I don't know, three or four years maybe altogether before I could save up enough money uh, and justify splurging uh, on such a luxury as that stained glass, that deer drinking in the creek that we just hung in there. I got the window out of the heap and Fran, she had painted this painting, this Rocky Mountain scene with the mule deer right here and the does on the little island. And I had it hanging in my office, not my office, but my store. Uh, I used to have a, a, a marine dealership and we had an outfitting section where we sold guns and hunting equipment and outdoor clothing. And I had done a mock window in the back of that store uh, where these two big paintings uh, hung. I still got the other one out in the garage. It's antelope uh, out on the uh, Sage Prairie. And I cut this uh, painting down to size. Uh, I stole a little bit of space, um, not much. Uh, actually, hardly any at all because the 2 by 4 wall uh, gave me enough depth to build this so-called shadow box, if you will, uh, which I ran wire into when I roughed it in because I knew I was going to have some backlight here if I, uh, if I did hang a stained glass piece. But I got tired after about a couple of years of just looking at this blank wall. So I got the window sash off the heat, um, kind of cleaned it up, put some stain on it, uh, hung that painting back there, cased it out, and then I got some uh, old rough sawn cedar that I had trimmed the baseboard out uh, in the living room in here. And I put a stain on that, this green stain, and then sanded the top of the rough sawn down so I could get this distressed look uh, in this frame here. So I, uh, I liked it. After it was all said and done, I liked it. I said, you know what? If I do ever get that piece of stained glass, I'm gonna leave this just the way it is because it's the old original uh, sash from the original bathroom window in the old house. And it's lit on a switch here. It just kind of dresses up uh, this little alcove uh, coming into the bathroom and into the bedroom that's over here. I will show you one other little thing I did. Now remember in the beginning of this video when I was telling you about my sweet friend Christina from Indianapolis um, and the people uh, that introduced us, uh, one of my clients that had bought a boat from me, his name is Brian. He knew that I liked Native American art. And I don't know if he'd ever seen some of the totem poles that uh, I had carved, which I might show you all sometime. Uh, but anyway, this right here is a solid wooden carved bust of Geronimo. And Brian saw it at an art show somewhere and he bought it for me and gave it to me, gifted it to me uh, as a present. And I always like doing interesting little things and houses and structures I build. And I had envisioned uh, making this little niche right here uh, for some kind of piece of art. And <laughs> if you ever do a, a video showing you the, the Pungo Prairie Saloon, what it used to look like a little bit and what it looks like now, you really didn't see any art hanging in that house. Uh, I had to come up with a lot of imagination uh, to be able to place a piece of art anywhere in this ugly old house uh, that used to be ugly. I don't think it's ugly anymore, maybe outside. I kept Geronimo here on top of the TV uh, before I had a flat screen uh, for a number of years before I got to the point where I could frame this wall out, build this little niche, put a spotlight on it for Geronimo. Well, that was a fun little afternoon project. It wasn't too taxing. <laughs> I just, you know, I enjoy being creative, uh, whether it be in uh, something I'm cooking or uh, building. Uh, just try to have fun with it, no matter what it is. And uh, that's really the tally. What have you gotten into? 
Oh my gosh, you gotta go outside. <laughs> oh, she'd been running around outside chasing birds and Lord knows what else while I was in here filming. But um, no, like I said, I really enjoy being uh, creative and, and that's a really fun part about YouTube is because there's so many creative people uh, on YouTube. Back when I built uh, most of this, the, the saloon, the little house, uh, the house I raised my family in. Uh, that was long before there was any YouTube channel uh, where you could go and share everything with and get so many good ideas from so many other people. Uh, and one channel I've been enjoying here lately, I've discovered it, I don't know, about a month ago. It's called Alone uh, in Remote Alaska. And it's about uh, this, this lady. Um, her name is Alone, and I think she's from Colorado, I'm not sure where in Colorado, but she just decided she was, I'm gonna sell it all and move to Alaska and just uh, be on her own in a, in a remote setting. And she's really creative on her channel. She, I mean, just last week, just even with our Christmas decorations, simple, but creative, uh, taking advantage of the things that were uh, around her and her environment. Uh, she's, I like what she's been doing with her cabin that she bought up there. So uh, if you enjoy this channel, you probably really enjoy uh, Alone in Remote Alaska. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the comments section or no, in the description box uh, of this video here. Anyway, uh, if you'd like to see maybe a little tour, more about the Prongo Prairie Saloon, uh, how it came to be called that, uh, the old house that this has transformed from into. Um, leave us, uh, leave some comments down below. Let me know. Maybe I'll do a video on that sometime. But anyway, we appreciate y'all joining us this afternoon uh, for this little project with the stained glass uh, in the bathroom window. So we love y'all. Enjoy you spending this time with us. Thank you so much. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more next time on the Pungo Prairie.